Hey, welcome back, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me here at Courageous Media and the Chris Highland Show. We've got to talk about Kamala Harris's Kamala Harris's DNC acceptance speech last night, because let's just be honest, that thing was a train wreck. Now, it's a train wreck if you care about the truth, if you care about honesty, if you care about uh, all of those things. However, from a pure optics perspective, from a pure propaganda perspective, I mean, compared to Joe Biden, she's a master communicator. She's way better than Joe Biden, which is a problem. It's a problem for us. We want to see an actual leader elected who wants to see someone who really does love America elected. It's going to be tough to get through this. I'm going to jump from spot to spot. I'm going to try not because it's 42 minutes of nonsense. Nobody wants to sit through that. We're going to jump from highlight to highlight and talk about some specific things that she said, which are just outrageous. Let's just say that she basically revisited almost every debunked hoax nonsense that's been out there. I'll give her credit. She skipped the Charlottesville one. <laughs> she didn't mention that one by name, but the other stuff that she said is just riddled with lies. And so we're going to dive into this. But hey, if everybody could, my only uh, cost of admittance for this is please smash that like button, share this on your socials, uh, X or Facebook or whatever you got would really appreciate it. All right. Let's dive into this nonsense. Like I said, I'm going to try to keep my cool. I will do everything I can to maintain an even keel as I listen to this because I've listened to it once already. And if you've seen the, the, uh, the X video of the guy who smashes his TV while watching the speech, that's what I feel like. I feel like I, have, I watch this stuff so you don't have to because frankly, watching this stuff end to end is like sticking an ice pick in your eye over and over again. I'm just a glutton for punishment, I guess. So. We're going to start about eight minutes in because we really don't care about her life story and blah, 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 and all the fluff. But let's start to get into some of the meat of the speech as this gets really painful. Here we go. As a right to safety, to dignity, and to justice. Now, she's talking about her time as a prosecutor here. It was 10 seconds where she just said, that's why I got into being a prosecutor. Uh, really your time as a prosecutor was an abject, dismal failure. And we'll get into more of this because she brings out the prosecutor angle a little bit later. As a prosecutor, when I had a case, I charged it not in the name of the victim, but in the name of the people. For a simple reason, in our system of justice, a harm against any one of us is a harm against all of us. Now let's be clear, that's not a choice you made, Kamala. That's what every single prosecutor does. You represent the state, and the state in every all 50 states says, on behalf of the people. Ugh, it's just, it's mind boggling. She tries to co-opt this like it's something she thought of, like it's some grandiose vision for America. It's been that way for 250 bloody years. All right. We're going to accelerate a little bit because she goes into a bunch of gobbledygook for a little while that's just rather nonsensical. So here we go. Has a precious, fleeting opportunity to move past the bitterness, cynicism, and divisive battles of the past, a chance to chart a new way forward. Okay, but let me remind everybody, She's in office now. We're, we're doing the hopey changey part of the speech. Hey, it's hopey changey. Let's do something new. You're there now. You and Oatmeal Brains have been in office for three and a half years. What are we changing from? Because if we need all this hope and change, that means you're an abject failure. You can't say you want hope and change from Trump because guess what? He's been out of office for four bloody years. And those have been the worst four years in our country's history almost. I mean, the fact that they try to go they, they try to go here and the media lets them just get away with it. It's utter nonsensical propaganda. We're in power now, but we need change. We need change. And you've got 20,000 clapping seals in the audience. Yeah, we need change. We need change. Change from what, morons? You're in office now. Why don't you enact the change you want now? Why don't you do it now? Because you don't want to do it now because all your changes are utterly disastrous Soviet communist policies. And you don't want to give anybody a preview of what they're going to be 
you're going to pretend to be populist and mainstream for the next 70 days. And if by some virtue of abysmal failure, you, you get installed into the presidency, you will destroy America. So this whole hopey changey thing is completely false. Do not buy into it. They're trying to get you onto the old Obama playbook, hope and change. Now, at least he had hope and change from something. Eight years of George W. Bush, eight years in the Iraq war, eight years in Afghanistan. He could preach that message. Kamala has no way to preach it. She's in office now. The wars we're in now are her fault. The inflation we're in now is her fault. Now, let's get back into this as we roll into more lies. Now we're going to get into some Trump stuff. Be a president for all Americans. You can always trust me to put country above party and self. We can trust you? Really? We can trust you who told us for three and a half years that Joe Biden is on top of his game. Joe Biden is mentally fit. Joe Biden has no cognitive issues. Joe Biden's perfectly fine. We can trust you who about 30 days ago, along with your buddies, Obama and Pelosi, staged an Article 25 coup who blackmailed the existing current president with humiliation, degradation, and an Article 25 uh, process if he didn't step down. We can trust you who lied about it for three and a half years and then waltzed in, installed in a bloody palace coup. How do we trust you? We can trust you who put people in prison against the law. How do we trust? We cannot trust you at all. You have lied your way through your entire career. And I hate to bring this up, but let's face it. You lied. Uh, you, you parsed the truth about your ethnic identity. For several years, you were Indian American, Indian American. Now we don't even discuss that. Now you're a black American. Guess what? You were never, you, you may be some level of black based on your father, just looking at him. But we also know that he's a Brahmin Indian based on people that have actually met him. So this whole thing is just a scam. It's absolute lies. No, we cannot trust you, Kamala. Ay, ay, ay. yeah. Like I said, I'm going to do my best. I'm not going to boil my blood. So let's chill out. All right, here we go. We'll keep rolling through this. And again, I'm, I'm jumping parts just because we'll, we'll get rid of the applause lines and the fluff and the nonsense. Against predators who abuse them. As Attorney General of California, I took on the big banks, delivered $20 billion for middle-class families who faced foreclosure, and helped pass a homeowner bill of rights, one of the first of its kind in the nation. I stood up for veterans and students being scammed by big for-profit colleges, for workers who are being cheated out of their wages, the wages they were due, for seniors facing elder abuse. I fought against the cartels who traffic in guns and drugs and human beings. Who no, you don't. You have wide, you have stretched the, you've opened the border wide open. The number one place for human traffickers, for cartels, for drug traffickers is the southern border. And it is open, not because you oopsed it, but because you made it open. You and Mayorkas and Oatmeal Brains, day one of your administration, undid all of the Trump era remain in Mexico policies, uh, Title 41 and 42 policies, you undid every single Trump era executive order and regulation. You opened the border to 20 million illegal aliens. You opened the border to fentanyl flowing across, killing 100,000 Americans a year. You opened the border to drug traffickers and child sex traffickers. That's why we have 221,000 missing children from your border, Kamala, Kamala. You did not take on the cartels. You partnered with them. You did not take on the drug traffickers. You partnered with them. I would not be surprised if there is money flowing and kickbacks back into your bank account somehow. That's just a complete and utter speculation on my part. 
But when you look at what this border has done to America, you cannot say that you have fought any of these people. You are in league with them. You are in league with the terrorists, with the Chinese military nationals who have rolled across our border by the hundreds of thousands. You are in league with the criminal illegal aliens who have come out of prisons in Venezuela, Nicaragua, Cuba, and other places who have sexually assaulted and killed multiple women and people across this great nation. Do we forget Lake and Riley, Rachel Marin, Jocelyn Nungare, and the dozens and dozens and dozens of others who have been victimized by the people you invited in? You didn't just oops, you invited them in with a red carpet. You are not for the border. Absolutely not. America, please wake up and realize that this woman is lying to your face in the most some of the most bold-faced lies, and she will never be fact-checked by the act by the by the propaganda media because they are beholden to their one true master, which isn't even the DNC, it's the globalist cabal of corruptocrats who run them who are trying to institute one world government by destroying the United States and by destroying the West. Ay, ay, ay. This woman is just unconscionable. She is a complete puppet of the globalist cabal of corruptocrats that want to destroy our country. All right, let's keep going. We're going to roll forward to some other nonsense. Here we go. Fellow Americans, this election is not only the most important of our lives, it is one of the most important in the life of our nation. In many ways, Donald Trump is an unserious man. But the consequences, but the consequences of putting Donald Trump back in the White House are extremely serious. Consider Consider not only the chaos and calamity when he was in office, but also the gravity of what has happened since he lost the last election. Donald Trump tried to throw away your votes. When he failed, he sent an armed mob to the United States Capitol where they assaulted law enforcement officers. When politicians in his own party begged him to call off the mob and send help, he did the opposite. He fanned the flames. And now, for an entirely different set of crimes, he was found guilty of fraud by a jury of... Okay, I got to stop here before we get into the scam New York b trial. I'm sorry. I'm starting to lose it. This woman is absolutely lying to your face. Let, shall we rewind a little bit, just a little bit, to January 6th of 2020? First of all, Trump did not send armed anybody anywhere. No one was armed in that mob. Certainly not because Trump asked them to be armed. Remember, the only person who died on January 6th was Ashley Babbitt, an unarmed woman who was shot by one of Nancy Pelosi's personal bodyguards shot, mind you, through a win a closed window and a closed locked door. She posed zero threat. Now, let's get into this other nonsense. She told you an abject lie that people begged him to send help and to send the people home. Okay. To, this has been debunked so many times. And this is the first time I, I actually, I wouldn't say debunked because this is the first time I've heard a national politician say this utter BS. Remember that Trump offered over and over and over and over again the National Guard. He pleaded with Pelosi and Bowser to take the National Guard. He offered the National Guard. He was ready to send the National Guard. And they said, no, 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 because January 6th was a false flag operation from the get-go. Also remember, we're going to flip out of her speech for just a moment because I want you to remember exactly what Trump said Remember that this was taken down by five minutes after it was put up by Twitter. This is what Trump said, and I will let him say it in his own words so that he can debunk Scamala on his own. I know you're hurt. We had an election that was stolen from us. 
It was a landslide election, and everyone knows it, especially the other side. But you have to go home now. We have to have peace. We have to have law and order. We have to respect our great people in law and order. We don't want anybody hurt. It's a very tough period of time. There's never been a time like this where such a thing happened. Where they Okay. Do I need, I mean, he said it in his own words. It's time for you to go home. We have to have peace. And he said it over and over again in many tweets before that. He said it in his speech. Go to the Capitol and peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. No, there was no major violence on January 6th. Yeah, there was a bunch of pushing and shoving, uh, but nobody broke down the doors of the Capitol. Those magnetic doors were open from the inside. And let's also remember that all of the instigation, that all of the virtual violence, you know, the, the near violence that we got to was on the part of agitators in the crowd who were there at the behest of Antifa and the FBI. That's why the FBI will never allow 18 plus hours of footage, camera footage to be given to the American public because it will prove that this whole thing was instigated by them. And let's not forget the actual violent riots that took place in Minneapolis, in Wisconsin, in Chicago, and everywhere else where Kamala Harris showed up with the Minnesota Freedom Fund and bailed arsonists, murderers, uh, sexual assaulters and all out of prison because that was the summer of love. They burned down an entire city. They burned down police departments. They burned down federal buildings. But that was okay. No, this is complete and utter garbage. Wow, absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. How anybody could support this woman who lies basically for a living and in, in, in knowable, demonstrable lies. It's not even a lie that it's hard to get caught out on. She, she, told, she just told you that when Trump was begged by his own people, which did not happen, to send the National Guard, he didn't do it. When Trump was begged to tell people to go home, he didn't do it. We have demonstrably showed you that on both cases, she is telling you an abject lie. Just absolutely nuts. Okay, let's fast forward. Let's, let's keep going here because I think there's a little bit Everyday more Everyday Americans and separately, and separately found liable for committing sexual abuse. No, he was not found liable for committing sexual abuse. That's a complete and utter debunked lie. The only thing he was found liable for was uh, basically defamation. That was, that was based on this utterly scam accusation, which, oh, by the way, he's not going to pay a single dime on because the, the appeals on this are going to bury it and don't even get into the 40 felony counts by a corrupt judge with a corrupt jury with corrupt jury instructions using immunized information, that whole thing is now a mistrial. It has to be. If it's not, it'll get overturned at the appellate level. It has to be because they gave the jury tainted instructions and they gave, they sent the jury to deliberate with evidence that they can't have because it's considered immunized by the Supreme Court. This whole thing is a complete train wreck. Okay, we're going to fast forward from the Trump lies to some more Trump lies that she gets into a little bit later. Not to improve your life. Not use the immense powers of the presidency of the United States. Not to improve your life. Not to strengthen our national security. But to serve the only client he has ever had. Himself. Hold off. Finish this part. And we know... And we know what a second Trump term would look like. It's all laid out in Project 2025, written by his closest advisors. And its sum total is to pull our country back to the past. But America, we are not going back. Okay, we're going to pause it there because we got two segments to get into here. First of all, Trump is the most unselfish president in history. Because you know why? He's facing 700 years in prison based on all these scam trials because he ran again. If he'd have gone off into the sunset and sat on his yacht with his 11 plus billion dollars or whatever he's up to now with the sale of True Social and his, and his 
his other real estate businesses and holdings. None of this would have happened. There would have been no scam lawsuit by what's her name. There would have been no scam lawsuit, a civil trial by New York over fraud. There would have been no nonsense um, Mershon trial. There would have been not. There would have been nothing in Mar-a-Lago. Would not have been raided. They would have left him alone because he was gone, and they would have been focused on whoever the new. GOP candidates were going to be in trying to use lawfare to keep them off the ballot. How do I know? Because they kept RFK. They were, did everything they did basically to Trump, to RFK, to keep him off the ballot. And he was part of their own party. And we all know how much of a scam these trials are. So Trump is absolutely unselfish because he faced the slings and arrows of these foolish lawfare, uh, weaponized DOJ, weaponized CIA, weaponized FBI people because he understands that the Democrat Party and their globalist cabal masters are coming for you. And they're coming for me. They're coming for all of us. And right now, basically the only dude standing in the way is Trump. And that's why we have to put Trump back in the White House. And frankly, I want to go back. All right, we're going to fa- let's keep going because this actually rolls into the not going back part. We are not. to when Donald Trump tried to cut Social Security and Medicare. We are not going back to when he tried to get rid of the Affordable Care Act, when insurance companies could deny people with pre-existing conditions. We are not going to let him eliminate the Department of Education that funds our public schools. We are not going to let him end programs like Head Start that provide preschool and childcare for our children. America, we are not going back. We need to go back. We need to go back to 1.4% inflation. We need to go back to prices that were in line. We need to go back to growing wages. We need to go back to energy independence and a net energy exporter. We need to go back to a vibrant economy. We need to go back to non-weaponized DOJ, CIA, FBI, ATF, IRS. We need to go back to all of that. And let's debunk some of this. She started this whole diatribe with Trump is going to use Project 2025. First of all, everything they say about Project 2025 is mostly false. They, they, they are banking on the fact you're not going to read a 900-page white paper, a 900-page policy paper. They're banking on that fact. So they tell you a bunch of demonstrably false lies out of Project 2025. The keynote statement in Project 2025 under use of executive power says that the new president should use all available executive power to return usurped power of the government, including executive power back to the people, back to the states, back to the localities. So first of all, they're telling you lies about what Project 2025 actually says. Later on top of that, Trump has nothing to do with Project 2025. He has distanced himself from it. It's a heritage it's a heritage group white paper. It's written by a think tank. He wants nothing to do with it. He is all in for Agenda 47, which is on his website. But they don't want to talk about Agenda 47 because that is very simple in its terms. It's very simple in its layout. You would be able to read it all by yourself in about five minutes. They want to harp on 2025 because it's 900 pages long and they're banking on low IQ, low informed voters. But I want to go back to a vibrant economy. I want to go back. I would even love to go back to 2016 when we had some semblance of free and fair elections, when there wasn't rampant ballot fraud with mail-in ballots, when there wasn't, as happened in Fulton County, more ballots counted in Fulton County than the actual population of Fulton County, and that's including children. So there were way more ballots counted in Fulton County than there were people to actually cast votes. And that's not even accounting for the fact of how many of the population of Fulton County were actually registered to vote. So this whole thing is a complete scam. Kamala Harris is an abject liar. The problem is she can lie really well with a teleprompter. 
Now, the key to this election is going to be in the next 70 days. Is that what we've got? 60, basically 70, 72 days, maybe. The key is going to be Trump and the Trump team and whatever media are willing to try have got to get Kamala Harris speaking off the cuff. She can read a teleprompter a thousand times better than oatmeal brains Biden. And that's what everybody's comparing her to right now. They're not really comparing her to Trump. They're comparing her to oatmeal brains. They've got to get her off the cuff and they've got to get her talking policy because her policies are abysmal. Her policies are Soviet communist. Her policies will destroy America. Her policies right now, as they stand, are price controls on food and rent. Now, we haven't had price controls on food in America, but we have had rent controls. And everywhere there's rent controls, it leads to a shortage of available units because no investor is going to walk in and build something that they can't charge market rent for. It also traps people in their, ho- in, in, their, in their rental homes. It will destroy the real estate market, which will also destroy the value of your home. Price controls on food will absolutely wreck the economy because that is there's three staples, basically food, clothing, shelter, water's in there, and energy, the staples. So now she's going to take housing and food and put them under rent controls. It'll demolish the economy. On top of that, She has proposed almost doubling the capital gains tax to 44%. She wants to raise the corporate income tax by uh, 33% so that your wages go down, so that companies flee America, so that capital flees America. And then get this, in in the most lame brain, evil thing she said, they they want to tax unrealized capital gains. So every year... If you are a homeowner or if you own a stock portfolio or if you own a trading card collection, a baseball card collection, every year the government is going to come into your home, into your business, into your life and valuate everything you own. And if they determine that the value of those things have gone up, if your stock portfolio on paper went from 100000 to 150000 Get prepared to write a $12,500 check to the government. Oh, wait, you don't have the money because you didn't actually sell the stock? Sorry, write the check anyway. Oh, your house went up by $100,000 over the last two years? Yes, you owe the government $25,000 now. Wait, what? I don't have $25,000. The value of my house went up. Oh, you're probably going to go have to get a second. Well, this is probably the third or fourth time they've taxed you on this. So now you're going to be into your fifth mortgage on the house in order to pay the taxes on your home. Talk about wrecking the economy and destroying all of the middle class wealth. That's what will happen. So we do absolutely need to go back and we need to go back to a secure border. We need to find the 221,000 children that have been lost to child sex trafficking. Thank you, Kamala Harris. We need to go back to 1.4% inflation and not every single price in America up 40, 50, 60%. Thank you, Kamala Harris. No, this speech was so riddled with lies that the media will never tell you about. So I wanted to do this. I wanted to get it out there for you. Thanks everybody for rolling up. I cannot wait for this debate. The only debate so far that she's, I guess, agreed to is on the 10th. These debates cannot come fast enough or often enough for Trump to pin her to the wall, just like Tulsi Gabbard did. Tulsi Gabbard ended her 2020 presidential campaign in less than two minutes. And Trump needs to do the same thing. I would use the exact same line that Tulsi Gabbard did. Day Minute one of the debate, I would say, hey, tell me about the 1,900 black men you locked up on felony marijuana charges using a tainted drug lab that forced a thousand of those to be overturned, but not after they were incarcerated, lost their jobs, lost their families, lost their money. Oh, and what about the two people, one doing 50 to life and one on death row that you withheld other exculpatory evidence on against the law, you should be in prison for holding them in prison for as long as you did until you were forced by a court to let it go. The one man, Jamal Trulove, receiving 13 million in settlement from the state. That's how I would start that minute one and then roll into the rest of her policies. But I cannot wait for that debate.
Again, hey, this one went a little longer than I wanted to, but I get passionate when I hear people just telling lies. Hey, I'm, freedom of speech is amazing. We just need people to tell the truth. But we need freedom of speech. So when this happens, we can debunk it three ways from Sunday, which is already happening all over the social media news network, not the propaganda media. So thank you so much for rolling up. This woman needs to be kept as far away from the White House as possible. So please, to do that, we've got to execute. We've got to donate. We've got to volunteer. We've got to get into the arena and fight. And we have got to do 10, 10, and 10. 10 people with you to vote, 10 social media posts, 10 emails. We can do this thing. And we got to pray because it really depends on God. Hey, if you haven't already, again, my only cost of admission here, please smash that like button right now. If you haven't done it all yet, hit the like button. Also, if you could, just share this with one of your social media accounts. Just do it right now. Really appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed, turn on the notifications to the channel. Thank you so much. If you're willing to partner with us financially like Simon Brandy and others, please join us as a partner on YouTube. Really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for your support. You guys are the greatest. You're the best audience. Remember, it'll all be good in the end. And if it's not yet good, it's not yet the end because God is sovereign. Until I catch you next time.